In this video, we'll create a pure CSS responsive drop-down navigation with HTML5 and CSS3. So as you can see here on the left-hand side, I have the full width version and on the right, I have the mobile version displaying. So if we go up top to the navigation and hover over the navigation links, we'll find that they're going to change to this light blue color. And if we flex the screen down at 768 pixels, it's going to change to the mobile version of the website. So later in the video, I'll show you how you can change it from 768 to 576, for example. But here on the right, if we click the menu button, it's going to display all of our navigation links and it's going to push our content down the page so it's not hovering or displaying on top of any of the content. So in the description of this video will be the responsive drop down menu starter files if you want to follow along with the tutorial as well as the finished version right here of the drop down menu. So I'm going to go ahead and open up index.html and CSS. I'm going to be using the free text editor called Sublime Text, which works for Windows and Macs. And then I'm going to have index.html open in Google Chrome as we're developing the drop-down navigation. So let's go ahead and put these starter files to the side and we'll see what's already included for us in index.html and style.css. So as you can see here, we have the image already uploaded and the uh, paragraph underneath it to start us off with some content for the tutorial. So we have the image class banner right there with the beach image and then the paragraph underneath. Then on style.css, we have a Google font added for us as well as the media query started. So at the top here, you can see we have the title of the website followed by the link to style.css and the starter image and paragraph there. So let's start off with the HTML5 tag nav and then inside of that we'll create a div ID for our logo. So we'll just call this div ID logo and inside of that we'll add our uh, logo image which is macintuts.png from the starter file and then close out the div for the div ID. So now if we refresh, our logo will be right here. We're not really seeing it because it's white. But let's move on to basically a button or a label tag, which will help us display the navigation here when we click on the menu button. So drop down underneath the div ID, and we'll write label for, and we'll call this drop, and then class toggle and then in between our label tags we'll just write menu or you can write whatever you want to display right here for your button okay and then we'll drop down and we'll have an input tag so we'll say input type checkbox and then we're not going to give this a name but we'll use the ID where it says drop so for the uh, label. Okay, and then you can close out your input tag. And now if we refresh, here we have the menu text with our checkbox next to it, which later will be displaying our list items here for the mobile version, as you can see. So let's go ahead and add our unordered list for our navigation now. So you can drop down underneath the input, and we'll give our unordered list a class. We'll call it menu, and then close out the UL. And inside of that, we'll have our list items with the links inside of them. So liahref, and then home for the first link. And I'm just going to use the hashtag to keep the links blank here. For home, for example, you can do index.html or the home page of your website address. So we'll change the second one to about. Then we have services, portfolio. And then the last one is contact. OK, so now if we refresh, there we have all five of our navigation items. So that's everything for our HTML. Now we can go over to style.css and get started from the top with our first style. So the first thing that we'll reference will be the actual body section of the HTML document. So this is what some may call a reset style. 
So we'll say body and margin zero to take away any inherent margin from Google Chrome. As you can see here, when we refresh, all the margin has disappeared. And then let's change our font size to 22 pixels from 16, which is the inherent font size with Google Chrome, and then our line height to 32 pixels to space everything out a bit. And then let's use the font family that we have imported from Google Fonts at the top, which is Open Sans, and it's a sans serif font. Okay, so now if we refresh, there we have uh, sort of the rounded, softer font with Open Sans. So now let's do away with the, um, the menu toggle here. So we only see it once we're on the mobile version. So we'll reference the toggle class and then the ID drop right here. So we'll want to have that in brackets for our label. So ID equals drop and then open and close your swirly brackets and say display none. So now if we refresh our menu text and the checkbox has disappeared. Okay, so now let's style or get started with styling the actual nav. So we'll reference that with nav, and then let's take away margin and padding, with margin zero and padding zero, and then we'll give it its blue background color with the hex value 0, 1, 5, uh, 7, 9, B. Okay, so now if we refresh, there we have our blue background color and now we can move on to the logo styling so we'll want to add some some padding to our logo ID here and we'll have it float to the left so let's say hashtag logo display block and float left and then we'll give it a padding of 10 pixels top, 0 right, 0 bottom, and 30 pixels left. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. And then the next thing that we'll do is let's get rid of the white space that we see surrounding the navigation. So let's start with the bottom first and we'll create sort of an invisible horizontal rule saying that nothing can display immediately after the content because we'll use a clear tag Okay, so nav colon after and then content and we don't want to insert anything after our content so we'll leave it blank there and then we'll say display table and clear both. So this is going to clear that white space and push the image right up against the bottom of our navigation. Now let's move on to our unordered list. So we'll say nav ul and then we want it to push off to the right so we'll say float right and now if we refresh there we have it pushing off to the right and we have no separation on top of our navigation and then we'll say list style none to get rid of the bullet points next to our list items there okay so let's move on to our list items with nav ul li and then we'll say display inline block to have them push up next to one another horizontally and we'll have it float to the left within the unordered list which floats right. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Let's move on to our links now. So we'll reference the A tag here with nav A and let's have them display block and then we'll give them some padding with 14 pixels top bottom 20 pixels left right and then we'll want to reduce the size of them so let's color them white and then font size 17 pixels from 22 pixels okay and let's also get a do away with the underline with text decoration none 
So that's looking pretty good. And we have some unwanted space to the top and bottom. So let's go back up to our unordered list. And I'm going to say padding 0 and margin 0. OK, so that's looking much better. So now let's add the hover effect. Um, so we want it to display with that light blue shade when we hover over the navigation items, as you can see here. So we'll say nav a colon hover. And let's change the background color to 3378AF to get that light blue shade. And while we're at it, let's also reference the um, the banner class here for our image with image.banner. And let's give it a width of 100% so it stays within the screen. OK, so that looks pretty good. So that's everything for the full width version. So now we can move on to the mobile version of the website with the drop down menu. OK, so let's start from the top with our logo. And we'll go ahead and center it inside of our media query here. So if you want it to collapse into the mobile version um, at a narrower width, you can change the uh, 768 to 576, for example. So let's say display block for our logo. And then we'll give it a width of 100%. And then we want it to align center, so we'll say text align center. And then we want to take away the float left. See, it's still pushing off a little bit. So we'll say float none. And then let's give it a padding on the top and bottom. So we'll say padding 20 pixels on top, 0 on the right, and 10 pixels on the bottom. OK, so that's looking pretty good, just like the original here. So now let's move on to our list items. So we're going to give them a width of 100%. So we'll say nav ul li with 100%. OK, so that looks pretty good. Now we can move on to our toggle button here. So we'll want to reference the toggle class that we have up here where it says display none. So here's the toggle class. And then we have our A class. So dot toggle plus A. And then we'll reference the menu also. And we'll say display none. So now if we refresh, we're not seeing the menu class here or the toggle button. So we'll go ahead and reference only the um, toggle class now without the links included. So dot toggle, and we'll say uh, display block. And then we'll give it a background color of 00457C for the menu button. OK, so there we have it. And then let's change our, or let's add some padding. So padding 14 pixels top bottom and 20 pixels left right. And then let's give it its color of white. And we'll change the font size to 17 pixels. 
So now if we refresh, there we have it looking pretty good. But it's not really displaying as a button without the pointer. So let's say cursor pointer. Okay, so now let's go to the, um, the hover shade for the menu button and let's give it a background color of 003C6C. Okay, so there we have it. And now if we click it, it's not actually displaying the menu yet. So I want to reference the, um, the, uh, the ID here for drop for our checkbox. And we want it to tell it to display once it's checked. So we'll put this inside of brackets and we'll say ID greater than equal to drop colon checked plus unordered list display block okay so now if we refresh we should have our drop down unordered list displaying once we select the drop ID there with the menu link Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and flex this back up to full width here. And that does it for the full tutorial. I want to thank you for sticking around with me. Please remember to like this video, subscribe, turn on your notifications, and then I'll see you in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching.